Does voter fraud exist? I, I don't know for certain. Are you an expert in voter fraud? No, I'm not. Well, why then is Twitter right now putting purported warnings on virtually any statement about voter fraud? We're, we're simply linking to a broader conversation so that people have more information. No, no, you're not. You put up a page that says, quote, voter fraud of any kind is exceedingly rare in the United States. That's not linking to a broader conversation. That's taking a disputed policy position. And you're a publisher when you're doing that. You're entitled to take a policy position, but you don't get to pretend you're not a publisher and get a special benefit under Section 230 as a result. That link is pointing to a broader conversation with tweets um, from publishers and, and people all around the country. Mr. Dorsey, would the following statement violate Twitter's policies? Quote, absentee ballots remain the largest source of potential voter fraud. Uh, I imagine that we would label it so that people can have more context. In okay. How about this quote? Quote, third party organizations, candidates, and political activists. Uh, voter fraud is particularly possible where, quote, third party organizations, candidates, and political party activists are involved in, quote, handling absentee ballots. Would you flag that as potentially misleading? I don't, I don't, you don't know the specifics of how we might enforce that, but I imagine um, a lot of these would, would uh, have a label pointing people to a bigger conversation. Well, you're right. You would label them because you've taken the political position right now that voter fraud doesn't exist. I would note both of those quotes come from the Carter Baker Commission on Federal Election Re Reform. That is Democratic President Jimmy Carter and former Secretary of State James Baker. And Twitter's position is essentially voter fraud does not exist. Are you aware that just two weeks ago in the state of Texas, a woman was charged with 134 counts of election fraud? Are you aware of that? I'm not aware of that. If I tweeted that statement with a link to the indictment, would you put a warning on it that says, well, the Democratic Party position right now is voter fraud doesn't exist? I, I don't think it's useful to give in the hypotheticals, but I, I don't believe so. You, you don't believe so? Well, we're going to test that because I'm going to tweet that and we'll see what you put on it. What you just saw represents probably one of the scariest things that we've ever seen in the, you know, the history of mankind. Uh, for you know, lack of better words. And what that is, is for the first time ever, we've seen tech companies and Silicon Valley VCs and all these people that have a lot of money making decisions on what speech is acceptable and which is not. Now, you know, as, uh, as the media is called Biden the winner, um, what we've noticed is that this hasn't like stopped. There is no unity, there is no um, let's come together and, uh, and forgive and forget kind of thought process. It's actually only getting worse. Um, some of the uh, Democrat far left leaning, let's call them, um, senators at that same hearing that just happened about 24 hours ago from the time you're watching this video, were pushing for more censorship. They were pushing for people who don't agree with the narrative of climate change and mask mandates, which the CDC can't even get right. The CDC has completely contradicted itself, the WHO, whatever. At this point, I think we're all just wearing masks to get people around us to shut the fuck up, and that's really it. Um, do most people believe that it's gonna do anything? No, because you've now read conflicting stories. You've read that it's uh, oil-based, and it's, um, depending on the uh, the size of the gram of the um, uh, molecule, it's gonna go through the mask, it's not gonna go through the mask. Like, like the trust the science has gotten stretched and abused so much that I don't think most people know which way is up, okay? So at this point, I think, yes, a lot of it is to just kind of um, satisfy those people around them and to not make too much noise. Time out on all that. Let's take a second to congratulate all the Bitcoin holders, everybody who's stuck around for the last three years. Really let this sink in. This is way more important than the stupid shit we're about to talk about. For the last three years now, I've been in crypto. I got in in 2017. So, um, yeah, it's... And I got in, uh, what, Jul July 30th? Yeah, um, July 31st maybe, 2017, like right before everything got amazing. And I was just like, oh, this is, this is great. Talk about perfect timing, right? And, uh, and then 2018 happened and 2019 happened and two years of a bear market really teaches you a lot. And a lot of people quit. I, I can't tell you how many people quit. M uh, maybe millions, I, I know it's at least tens if not hundreds of thousands of people. Look at all the YouTube channels that died. I booted 6,000 people out of my community. I mean, these people, you can't even find them anymore. They just completely left and disappeared. Um, wow, I mean, it's just a pretty phenomenal thing to have happened, right? It's like everyone goes from like easy money to like the next minute, like they're, what, they're fucking dead. They're not even around anymore. Um, so congratulations to you, we hit um, very close to not, not only an all-time high, but we definitely hit a 2020 all-time high, and it's the highest we've seen price in over two years. So um, we hit 18,417 according to uh, Coinbase and um, Google.com. So 
congratulations to all of you who've been playing this since the three thousand uh, dollar low in March and congratulations to all of you who've just been holding or whatever you've been doing uh, still a believer and we did get a pretty sharp correction right after that uh, now we're sitting at 17 8 17 6 to 17 8 I think we'll uh, we'll see that here for at least through the end of today uh, I don't think it's gonna aggressively get that uh, that inefficiency get bought up but we'll see enough of that um, that's the good note of this video. Let's get back into it though. So yeah, these these congressional hearings, it's like I'm kind of at the point to where why even bother having them because you got Republicans just take it as time to talk shit and they do a good job. Like Ted Cruz, I didn't really know him before following all this stuff, but Ted Cruz does a pretty good job of grilling people. Now does this equate to like stuff actually happening? Change getting created. Um, accountability being had no because one side of the aisle gets up in front of them and says hey you guys suck we sh we need to get rid of 230 and you need to be held accountable for the election meddling and you know the article suppression and uh, mostly biasly being conservative right leaning on all your fact checks we proved this in a video I did two videos ago just go to Donald Trump's um, Twitter account and you'll see like fact check disputed fact check fact check and then there's also the little ones where they'll do a um, this is sensitive material you got to click on the view button like an extra step to view the tweet um, all of those things are being massively applied to one side and not really the other I showed you a tweet from who is it that Ruben or Rubini talking about how they need to burn down the Republican Party we showed you a tweet about AOC saying that we need to make a list those tweets are still up no fact check no viewer discretion is advised no nothing I wish they would have used those examples because those are some very dramatic aggressive examples and we had the left that showed up and they said actually no people that are denying climate not going along with this this 2030 agenda and this great reset agenda we need to like just purge them off the internet um, we also saw some really interesting things as well, which I'll get into in a second. We're going to play another clip, but here we go. So Jack actually came out and essentially apologized. So he apologized and said we screwed up. Okay, it's critical we consider these solutions. We optimize for new startups. Um, doing so ensures level playing field. Oh, yeah, they don't want a level playing field, by the way. That should be insanely obvious considering Cloudflare pulled down their protective DDoS services the day of the election on um, BitChute. Like, did old Jack call up a favor and say, hey, guys, no, actually, we, we want level playing field. We want freedom of speech. Did old freaking Susan call up and say, yeah, man, put them back on the Internet. Hey, how can we help? Did, uh, did Susan uh, offer any help at all the day of? Now, they were nowhere to be found because they were doing exactly what they wanted to do. He said somewhere in here, illustrate rational behind our actions. Demonstrate. Oh, basically, their official response is that uh, it was an error in their policy, and they updated it, meaning that they... They essentially jumped the gun and thought that it was hacked materials and blocked it. And then they didn't have a uh, safety feature in there to bring the account back. So that's why New York Post's account was deleted or, or suspended for so long. Yeah, it's, it's, all, it's, it's all nice, right? It's all nice after the fact. And after he sat around and thought of how to still frame himself as the hero, because you know, here it is, wow. Um, I hope this illustrates the rational behind our actions, demonstrates our ability to take feedback, admit mistakes, and make changes all transparently to the public. We acknowledge there are still concerns around how we moderate content and specifically our use of the 2030. 2030 needs to go away. Understand that when it goes away, there's going to be way more censorship. Good. That means that then you can hold them accountable. Right now, you can't hold them accountable. So there's no point in having the, the 230 because they're acting as publishers. And then they get in front of Congress and say, ah, now we're not acting as publishers. So it's like, enough, guys. Okay, so I'm going to cut to a clip really quick talking about um, this uh, Facebook program that uh, Mark Zuckerberg admits doesn't he isn't aware of it because he doesn't know the name but I you can definitely see how he was thrown for a loop when this in fact was thrown at him um, and he admits that these programs do exist it's basically a program that Facebook has that follows you all over the internet and every single other time you use login as Facebook or even not it's it's tracking your data and then obviously we know that Facebook's selling your data so how nice for them huh they got 230 section protection they got they can uh, take all your data, record everything that you're doing uh, on their site and off their site, sell it for the highest dollar, and nothing happens to them. I mean, fuck, dude. You and I, we signed up for the wrong job, man. We should be doing this shit. So anyways, we'll cut to that clip now. Go. Centra is a tool that Facebook uses to track its users, not just on Facebook, 
but across the entire internet. Centra tracks different profiles that a user visits, their message recipients, their linked accounts, the pages they visit around the web. Mr. Zuckerberg, how many accounts in the United States have been subject to review and shut down through Centra? Senator, I do not know because I'm not actually familiar with the name of that tool. I'm sure that we have tools that help us with uh, our, our platform and community integrity work, um, but I, I am not familiar with that name. Do you have a tool that does exactly what I've described and that you can see here over my shoulder? Or are you saying that that doesn't exist? Senator, I, I'm saying that I'm not familiar with it. Okay, so again, it's uh, there's a lot more starting to come out. Republicans just do this. They just do this, okay? Uh, that's why most people don't like Republicans. And, and Democrats are just, at this point, crazy. So it's like <laughs> you get do nothing or crazy. I don't know. Anyways, um, let's keep moving here. I've got like six other things to show you and touch on, and then we're going to wrap it up. All right, UK MP suggests people shouldn't be allowed to work without COVID vaccine. Ah, the plot thickens. Jay, you're being so dramatic about this mandatory vaccination stuff being attached to your ability to travel. Yeah, because we haven't seen China do this with the social uh, social credit systems that they've got. And we didn't hear about this early on. And um, some of this was a little bit pulled from the hip. And there were, it wasn't just me saying this. It was a lot of people saying this that have read, you know, 1984 Orwell, Orwellian story and have read, you know, all these other, I guess, things that have been put out that would be considered conspiracy theories. But uh, we've read those and we recognize that this has all the markings of it. And now it's just, it's there. And so now it's like, it's not even valuable to say I told you so because it's like, we just need solutions at this point. And uh, that'd be a low blow, you know, for people to be like, oh, I told you so. But I'm pretty sure at this point we can all agree that most of the conspiracy theories are actually now turning out to be true and it massively validates, you know, your David Ikes of the worlds, uh, of the world outside of the, you know, lizard uh, lizard alien shit. Uh, who knows? Fuck it. It's, we still got a month left in 2020. That might be validated too. Give it time. All right, so um, yeah, we saw Ticketmaster saying you gotta, within 24 to 72 hours, get a vaccination before you go to your stupid fucking concert. So get this, get this. The Hollywood elite who hate you anyways, we had, um, who was it, Lady Gaga, who just did a video in her army fatigues, making fun of patriots, making fun of people who love America and talking shit to your fucking face. And then on top of that, you're gonna pay that asshole to see her show, her shitty fucking music with all the satanic, demonic bullshit going on in the background and the checkered floors. And then on top of that, you got to get a vaccine which changes your DNA 72 hours before you go to do that. The, you you got to get this one checked out if this is you. If you're like sitting there going, oh my God, I can't wait till Lady Gaga is back in concert. Get this checked. Go get this checked, please. Um, yeah. British MP faced backlash Monday after suggesting that employees in the UK should not be allowed to go to work. Guess what, guys? Every Democrat... In, in America is about to suggest the same shit as soon as Biden takes over. I, I'll bet you, uh, as much as you want. <laughs> it's an easy deal for me. I'm not gonna say every Democrat, let me back that up. Every extreme left, you know, like the mob and all those, all the all the crazies, okay? All the crazies are gonna do it. I would say you know, a good 10 or 12 of them, okay? How's that for a bet? Um, are, are gonna be suggesting the same shit, okay? Anyways, yeah. Zero Hedge coming through with the dark, ominous tone. Okay. Um, Next up, we have a continuation of the whitewashing of history, of the just ignoring of facts. The biggest amount you're going to see this around is the voter fraud claims, which is what you saw in the beginning of the video with Dorsey saying, yeah, I don't know. Um, we don't believe that voter fraud exists. Ah, shut up, dude. It's, it's been proven. Um, it's been proven. And this was getting talked about even by Trump back in June and July and completely ignored. Oh, how the tables have turned. Okay, so another great example of um, of this is John Oliver. Look at this. From, okay, let's look at the two voting machines. Last week, Tonight with John Oliver in November of 2019. I think he did a whole 20 minute, 19 minute, 21 second segment talking about how voting machines are bullshit. And um, the uh, especially the Dominion voting machines are um are just ripe for fraud okay because back in 2019 they all thought trump was going to do it and so they were setting the pre-tones they were setting the context okay 
And what do you know how things change so quickly? November 16th, one year exactly, almost, uh, November 16th, 2020, John Oliver rallies against the dangers of Trump's uh, empty voter fraud claims. This is dangerous. Another 20 minute video, I'm sure, of this idiot with his accent just complaining about Trump, orange man bad. So kind of interesting how that happens. How many of these have you seen now? How many of these have you seen floating around the internet? When accountability for these people? None, none. And keeping with this accountability theme, we have Governor Gavin Newsom. Um, he did apologize for this, actually, so kudos to him. But um, I got a pup laying on the floor. But um, he went to a Napa Valley dinner, and apparently witnesses say they were so loud they actually had to close these outside doors. On the apology video, he said they were outdoors. Bullshit, Gavin. This is fucking indoors, okay? With indoor-outdoor uh, sliding doors that they had to close because you numbskulls wouldn't shut up. And uh, not a single fucking mask. Ooh, that hurts. So, rules for uh, you, but not for thee. And here he is. I don't know. It looks like he's about to take a shit standing up. And uh, whatever, just talking crap, blah, blah, blahs. And uh, he did apologize for this. So, you know, I give him kudos for, like, coming on national television and say, you know what, it wasn't a good look. Um, I apologize. And... Um, yeah, whatever. I can do better. Speaking of apologies, we've got apology tours happening right and left. And this is only when you rub your finger in their face like they do to you. Um, do you get a little hints of an apology? And uh, do these people actually mean it? Fuck no, they don't. And most of the time they're doing it in written format. So again, kudos to Gavin for actually getting on national television and saying this while he's looking at you uh, in the camera. Um, but here's this idiot who, uh, who apologized for comparing Trump his tenure to Nazi Germany on the anniversary. Jesus Christ. Like, you, you couldn't get any dumber. These people are so psychotic, they don't even know what they're doing. Um, they're so blinded and delusional that they don't even know what they're doing. And it's just leading them to gaff after gaff after gaff. Uh, insane. Okay, and the last thing I want to touch on is really the, um, the big thing that's cracked open and the thing that uh, I could probably shoot a couple hours worth of video on is uh, you need to look into Dominion, uh, the software uh, that was used for the voting machines. over They were uh, dispatched to over 2,000 districts. It is a Denver-based company, apparently. Um, but they have confirmed uh, Clinton Foundation donations and links and um, former Pelosi staffer link. I actually shared this about a week ago, and I wasn't sure if it was true. Here we go. So Pelosi, a uh, former staffer from Pelosi, is working uh, with them, and obviously the Clinton Foundation is involved. I mean, it's, it's so ridiculous that apparently George Soros Foundation uh, is like on the same floor as one of the Dominion uh, offices. Uh, we got links to Germany, which, big surprise, maybe that's why Trump took out the troops from Germany earlier this year, which everyone just said was an awful idea and so bad, blah, blah, blah. But Merkel's not your fucking buddy, and she's definitely not a friend to the United States. So kudos on him for, he's probably known about this for a long time about what they planned on doing. Calm down, buddy. And um, so, you know, maybe there is this big thing going on, okay? You know, maybe the QAnon folks got it right. And uh, and there's this huge, bigger thing at play. I will tell you that um, they need to come correct with the evidence and make it undeniable so that, one, all the people that supported Biden, if this is true, all the people that supported Biden when there's blatant, blatant proof otherwise is uh stop it stop it okay okay down 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 uh they need to you know make it so where these people feel so stupid for even supporting biden because even right now to this very moment i mean they're mouthing off mouthing off on twitter um you know thinking that they're they're einstein and that they won and that uh polling was correct and this is just a historic turnout I don't know. I've got my doubts. And seeing all this with the Dominion's uh, software and now the links. I mean, look, when there's, when there's so many coincidences like this, it's just not that coincidental. Okay, life is not that coincidental. Pass, wearing a, wearing a similar shirt, having the same birthday, having the same name. The shit after that mathematically gets so rare that it's almost impossible for it to be to be like that okay but here we are all these coincidences happening over and over and over again so yeah um, I'm excited to see where this leads because if there has been they're they're linking this back to um, Chavo getting into Venezuela they're linking this back to Maduro getting in they're linking this back to um, elections all over the world that have been stacked in the wrong direction they're linking this back to the 2016 election 
I mean, it, it could be monumental the size of shit they're about to drop. And I hope they do, because my thought process was, look, Trump's sitting on some dirt. He's sitting on the laptop, uh, Wiener's laptop, which is such a weird thing to say out loud. You know, uh, I believe he is a supporter of WikiLeaks and uh, Assange, and because Assange is innocent. And so I, I, I always thought that if he lost, there would be some big data drop. And that's how I would do it. If, if Look, if I was going out and I knew of all this dirt, I would just release it all. I would just release it all. Fuck it. Let it all burn down and uh, let, let people make the decision. And maybe there needs to be something like that, you know, and then people march, march on their um, city center and basically demand that this is how it goes. And the people ultimately get to make the choice because that is what this was supposed to be. We were supposed to be the ones voting and deciding the outcome of the election. So if it's been tampered with, even though even the pro-Biden people should be able to say like hey man you know this is crazy this is fucked up and that is the one thing again we should be able to agree on will that happen will it go like that i don't know but a lot of interesting stuff happening epoch times so for all of you who hate um epoch you can find a problem in this i'm sure owen on has talked about it a ton of uh private blog sites have talked about it breitbart has been talking about it as well and covering this data uh so yeah there's plenty of sites doing it just because it's not on cnn not even fox is covering some of this stuff doesn't mean it's not true it just means that a lot of people are choosing not to cover it uh, i would suggest that you look into this yourself there are some serious uh, security concerns that have been brought up that are very obvious and i think that would be the thing that the best thing for us to leave off on is the interview with uh the gentleman that i brought up two videos ago uh where he was supposed to go on oh on that did in fact happen a four minute clip I'll cut that in right now at the end of this video, but that's all I got for you. So hit the like button if you like it, hit the down if you don't, comment below if you got something to say, subscribe, uh, hit the bell notification, help us get up into YouTube uh, YouTube algorithms, you know the game. Be on the lookout for the next one. See ya. So I was looking at this manual with the mindset of a penetration tester, of which I am. I'm reading the manual with a discerning eye and trying to figure out which parts of the system could be abused by uh, end users. The physical security of the device is the first step to security. If you can't secure the physical device, then you have no security. It, it's impossible to have security if you don't secure the physical device. So you have the issue of the person who is inside the tabulation machine, which is just a normal Windows 10 computer. Are they manipulating the votes before it goes to the flash drive? And then you have the next issue, which is now the votes are on the flash drive. Does, how does that flash drive get to the, com the county commissioner or whoever is assigned to accept the flash drive? Is the same flash drive being, uh, being sent over? So you could swap the flash drive theoretically. There's a, no accountability there. And then once the county commissioner or whoever uh, accepts that flash drive is the flash drive, do you trust them to not go in and edit the contents before they report it? So another issue is the keys. The keys to the machine are digital devices. It's unclear what the device is. It might be like an RFID device or USB or, or something, but it is clear that it's a digital device that holds uh, some kind of cryptographic key on it. If you lose this physical key, you lose absolute security of the entire precinct. So for example, if say Philadelphia was storing these keys in a warehouse and they, they were robbed and the only thing stolen were these keys and a laptop, then you should consider their entire election to be illegitimate because they have lost the physical security of the system, which is the most important uh, part of information security. And that's exactly what happened in Philadelphia just one month before the election. USB drives and a laptop had been stolen from a key precinct in Philadelphia. On election day, Biden overtook Trump's 800,000 vote lead in the dark of night. According to these tabulating machines, Biden surpassed Trump by nearly 60,000 votes statewide, a lead found in one county, the county from which a thief stole USB keys and a laptop to the precinct's ballot machines the month prior.